14 and 15. I can go a little higher than that if you want. And if you would, just just stay where you are. In other words, right. don't don't get close or point out anything. All right. All right. This first picture over here is a picture of Chancellor Sanford with Mrs. Roosevelt and General Beaver uh, at the dedication of the library at Georgia Southern back in the, about 1941. Right. For Bill to say, okay, fine. we're I mean. ready to go to the next one. Over the mantelpiece on, on the right is General Beaver in his early years and coaching and teaching that shows him with the football team in the Stone Mountain Prep School. This was back sometime after 1903 when he graduated from the University of Georgia. Anytime. Mm -hmm. uh, General Beaver is seen at the top of the picture in a bowler type hat. Uh, 
An interesting thing is that during those years, he was also coaching the Fort McPherson Army football team. It's another shot of, of one of the athletic teams at the Stone Mountain Prep School. You'll see General Beaver seated in the middle of the back row. During those years, they called him Professor Beaver. He taught languages primarily at the Stone Mountain School and also some mathematics. might be interesting to inject here that the reason General Beaver had taken this school teaching job was that he had received, been a recipient of the Rhodes Scholarship uh, his senior year at the University of Georgia, and in order to try and raise enough money to go to Oxford, he took this job teaching and coaching. And he liked it so much that he never attended Oxford. The next uh, picture is a senior, his senior year at the University of Georgia. It's a, it's a 1902 football team, and you'll notice General Beaver in the top row with a G on his shirt. He was the first all-Southern football player the University of Georgia ever had. And incidentally, the youngest catcher, uh, of the base, uh, youngest catcher and captain of the baseball team they've ever had. Photograph. Yeah. First photograph shows General Beaver, who at that time was the chief of staff of Governor Eugene Talmadge, and with Mr. Hugh Howell, an Atlanta attorney who was the father of Hugh Howell, Jr., who made our 1978 commencement address. They're showing departing for the inauguration of Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1932. The next photograph shows a general congratulating a cadet uh, at a Sunday parade in January of 1957 uh, at the Hollywood, Florida campus. Uh, general Beaver delighted in his annual trips to Florida each winter and felt that the benefits, particularly from the fine weather, was uh, worth all the costs. The school has been except for two interruptions, has been going to South Florida since the winter of 1932. Yeah, I'm done. Ready? The next photograph uh, was taken in the spring of 1947 it shows General Jonathan Wainwright, the hero of uh, Corregidor, uh, t 
talking with General Beaver. Uh, apparently, the general is trying to make a point. The general, General Wainwright, reviewed the cadet corps at that time and uh, remained on campus for the weekend. The next picture taken in the early 60s, uh, the title of the article speaks for itself that Sandy Beaver is Riverside. It, he always used to tell the boys in chapel that he began working for $11 a week and had money left over. He, in this article, is, it reads further down that going from $11 a week to someone who owned 25,000 shares of AT&T. He was also a recipient of the Horatia Alger Award, the member of the Football Hall, Hall of Fame, and many, many other awards and honorary degrees. Okay. The next picture is announces uh, General Beaver's death on December the 7th, 1969, at the age of 86. General Beaver worked practically until uh, the time of his death, which was on a Sunday. The pr prior Friday, he worked 15 hours. Uh, it was General Beaver's wish that uh, he and Riverside could do something for the University of Georgia. He always cherished his time there and gave credit to the school and to particularly to quite a, several of his professors for his success. He attempted to give the university an endowment during the time he lived, but the powers that be wouldn't agree to the terms it wasn't until after General Beaver's death that the university, particularly through the College of Arts and Science, agreed to accept this endowment on his terms, which meant primarily that teachers who taught so many hours in the classroom would receive an additional uh, endowment to their salary each year. The first of this endowment was uh, as it stated in this picture, and then uh, two years ago, an additional million dollars was given to the university for the same purpose. The next two shots will show General Beaver and uh, Governor Eugene Talmadge. It first should be said that they were college classmates and were friends uh, almost all of their life. The first picture here that we're showing it shows the general and Governor Talmadge at odds. At that time, General Beaver was both uh, the chief of staff for Governor Talmadge as well as chairman of the Board of Regents. And they uh, came to parting of the ways briefly over some of the policies of the governor which contrasted to the policies of the Board of Regents. The next uh, shot shows Governor and Mrs. Talmadge and General Beaver in an entirely different mood at uh, one of the University of Georgia football games. Uh, this is a shot of uh, General Beaver's diploma from the University of Georgia upon his graduation in June of 1903. In the right-hand portion of the diploma is a picture of the general during that same time. Uh, one thing that you find different from uh, diplomas in those days and now, that 
the signatures of all the professors uh, he, that, that, that General Beaver had while he was in attendance at the university.